couple of weeks ago, I was given the opportunity to help make a short commercial for my friend who runs a sports car rental company in Japan. And in this video, and for the first time ever, I'll be taking you guys behind the scenes and tell you everything from planning, scripting, scouting for locations, all the way to the gears that I use, editing, and sound design. By no means am I a professional, just a guy doing what he loves, and hopefully by the end of the video, I can leave you with a bit of inspiration, a bit of motivation, and tell you guys all the secrets to how you can do it as well. A little bit of a story time for those of you that are new. This is my friend James. He is the owner of NRT Rental Car, a sports car rental company based in Japan. We met last year in October when I sent him an email expressing my strong interest towards Japan and cars in general. And I want to see if potentially we can work on some video projects together. He texted me back the same night I sent out the email. The efficiency is insane. And since then, we've become good friends. He's been taking care of my automotive needs every time I visit Japan, and I've made more than a couple videos with him on this channel, filming my personal road trips, him inviting me to track days, and James has been super supportive of my creative journey, which I am very, very grateful for. Fast forward to February this year, I received a text from James asking if I'm available to come to Japan in April to help him shoot a video, where he'll be bringing out six of his sports car on a one-day road trip with his friends. And of course, there is no logical reasoning in this boy's brain to say no, but with a little bit of a caveat. Because James's friends volunteered to help with the shoot, they only had one day when they were all available. That means that the entire shoot had to be finished within a day. And I was in charge of being the producer, the director, the editor, the cameraman, sound man, uh, superman, Spider-Man, Iron Man, basically everything at this point. It was pretty daunting to think about because I never really directed a shoot, nor was I very comfortable giving instructions to people who are older and more experienced than me. You know what I mean? It's like giving instructions to your mom. Hey mom, listen, I am the captain now. You know, I won't have the balls to do that. And the introvertedness doesn't really help. But hey, nothing is fun without a challenge and I wanted to give my 110% into this project. I think planning is a very underrated process to, well, anything in life in general and in making videos. The more I plan out, the more efficient I can be on the go. And I was keeping in mind that I only have one day for the shoot and one slight hiccup can ruin the rest of the day's plan. So I know that I only had one chance to get it right. I arrived in Japan a week before the shoot just so I could go location scouting. I even ended up sleeping in a car for a night. I call this the most expensive hotel room in Japan, but some of you will call it torture because the next day we had to get up pretty early just to hit the mountain roads where we ended up picking the location for the shoot those are those are <laughs> google maps was also a great tool for me to plan on my shoot the only direction is lacking is with my direction in life but it's good enough because i can only stand at one specific point with my camera i had to mark down different spots on the road where it's easy for six cars to make a u-turn to go back and forth i also had to make sure that each point is not too far apart from each other so that one is more efficient two we don't waste too much fuel and three it'll be easier for me to retake the shot if i fucked up knowing exactly where to go and being in that exact location i can clearly envision in my mind what shots i can take what sort of camera and lens setup should I be using? Do I need a gimbal or an action camera? It really helps me a lot in planning for a shoot like this. And I really have to thank Andrew for the cold brew that morning because running on three hours of sleep in a car is pretty, uh, it's a fun, it's a good experience. You know what they say, you can sleep in a car, but you cannot race in a house. I also post my video scripts, mood boards, as well as many behind the scenes on my Patreon. So if you're interested as well as wanting to support my creative journey, as well as wanting to learn more about how I make these videos, please feel free to drop by, it will mean the world to me. I've left the link in the description. <laughs> I'm using the Sony a 7 as my main camera for basically all my shoots. I've been using it for just over two years and I think it's the perfect hybrid camera for someone like me who wants to do photo and video work. I know the Sony FX3 is out there and my friend has been tempting me to go and buy the camera, but I'll think about it, I'll think about it. Stop tempting me. My wallet, not happy. My go-to lenses are the Tamron 17 to 28 f2.8 and the one that I have on my camera right now, the Tamron 28 to 75 f2.8. They basically cover all the focal lengths that I need. I can get wide establishing shots with the 17 to 28 and I can get close up intimate detail shots 
with the 28 to 75 and they are way way cheaper than the Sony G Master equivalent so I would call them the cheap and cheerful lenses. I got these two lenses on carousel for second hand. The bargaining was lit. The Asian mindset runs strong. I'm also using a 2-in-1 ND CPL filter for the shoot that I got from one of my viewers actually that I met in Japan because I was kind of desperate for a CPL filter because it gets rid of the reflections that we would normally see on a car and it makes the colors pop out just a little bit more. Another filter that I always have on my lenses is the Nisi Black Mist One Quarter. It softens the highlights and brings up the blacks a little bit and gives out this very dreamy and less digital look which I personally really like. In order to mount a camera in the car for shots like this, I have to use a suction mount. I'm using the suction mount from Fallcam and I've basically been using it for all the shots you see me driving whilst talking to a camera. It, uh, it definitely sucks and you can get crazy perspectives and angles with this setup. Like this wheel shot that I got from outside of the car. And finally, I get to fly a drone for the first time. I didn't crash, so I would already call it a success. Okay, I'm also the pilot. I need to uh, write it down from unemployment to 10 jobs at once. Because I only bought the drone two weeks before the shoot, I need to quickly familiarize myself with how to fly a drone. And the quickest way that I found is by taking classes on Skillshare. If you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community built by creatives for creatives, featuring thousands of classes taught by industry professionals from filming, animating, photography, designing, and I even found cooking classes. I heard uh, girls like guys who can cook. Actually, I'll save that just in case. Skillshare has all the classes that you potentially need to take your creative journey to the next level. I've been taking my drone crash course, or should I say drone won't crash course. Wild Rabbit Productions aerial videography course has been super helpful to get myself familiar with using a drone. I kind of regret not getting a drone earlier because having an aerial perspective just gives the video a whole new dynamic. And it's always inspiring and motivating to learn new things because I think creativity is a class that doesn't have an ending. If you're also looking to start a new learning journey, the first 500 people to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial on Skillshare. And thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. This is arguably my least and my favorite part of the entire project. I have all the pieces to the puzzle and it's time to piece them together. My workflow looks a little something like this. I open different bins for different cameras, then I categorize them into different types of shots, whether they are action shots, insert shots, still shots, or detail shots. And this is where planning pays off because I already have a script and a vision before I shoot the video. All I have to do now is pick out the best shots and slowly piece them together into one cohesive video. And finally, no video is complete without the right music and sound. A lot of people neglect this, but I think music and sound is just as, if not more important than the video itself. Because you can always sit through a badly edited video, but you can never sit through a video that has bad audio. Longtime viewers would already know, but I use Epidemic Sound for basically all my music and sound effect. But for this particular shoot, I went the extra mile and I brought along this field recorder so I can record the sounds on set because each car's engine note is a little bit different and I want the listening experience to be as authentic and as satisfying as possible. Also, I like to play around with the music. What I like to do is like to rearrange the music to match the timing of my sequence. Because I don't want this video to be too long, I need a quick build up. Then immediately into a drop. And finally, I put the end of the music right after the drop so it has a nice fade. And finally, I like to layer sounds over the music so that the transition is less apparent and the video can flow a lot smoother. Sometimes you have to be a little bit creative so that you can work around the music. Overall, it has been a really amazing experience to be able to film something like this. It really feels like a childhood dream come true, but something has to go wrong during the shoot. My gimbal actually broke just a couple days before the shoot, but luckily my friend was also traveling to Japan and I quickly asked if he could buy and bring me a secondhand one. So huge shout out to him. Also, my lens broke. Uh, it doesn't really want to autofocus anymore, probably due to the vibration whilst hanging in the car and I might have dropped it more than a couple times. Oh, 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 oh.
Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Oh, ready. <laughs> oh, <she'd be> ready. <laughs> but after four years of making videos, I've come to expect hiccups like this and I feel like they've become a part of making these videos. I used to baby my gears a lot because I can barely afford them back then, to a point where I tried to avoid using them completely to keep them in pristine condition, probably for the resale value. But the more I film, the more I realize that gears are meant to be used, just like cars are meant to be driven. Of course, not recklessly, but accidents do happen every now and then, and you still should take some care to prevent these accidents from happening. And if they do happen, I like to tell myself, it do be like that sometimes and cry afterwards. Most of the gears I've been using, I've been using them for years. I know them inside out. The gimbal that broke, I've been using it for almost five years. I've used it ever since my first ever travel video on the channel. The lens that broke, I got it on carousel. It was secondhand, so it was kind of cheap and cheerful. It's just unfortunate that it broke under these circumstances, but they did the job well, so I'm more than happy about it. I'm also pretty happy that the weather was decent because the last time I went there for location scouting, it was foggy and it was windy. And it had been raining the past couple days prior to the shoot. It wasn't the perfect weather I was hoping for, but hey, I'll take the calm weather over wet and windy any day. I think the whole mindset of going into this project is just giving my 110% and working with what I have. I know it's easy for me to say, don't worry about gears or gears doesn't matter. They do matter to a certain extent, but I started off filming with just one camera and the lens. And all the gears that you see now, it's an accumulation of upgrades throughout these four to five years of making videos because I wanted to take my production to a next level. Okay, so how about this? The creative mindset that you possess is infinite amount of times more valuable than the expensive gears that you can potentially buy. You can make a good video with a shit camera, but you can also make a shit video with a good camera. You know, just some food for thought. And I think it's always nice to under-promise, but over-deliver. Wrapping this whole video project up, I'd like to say a huge thank you to James for giving me all the creative freedom for the shoot. I think it's one of the best gifts that you can ever give to a creator. And with the freedom, it also gave me a lot of motivation to go the extra mile and perfect the shoot. I'd also like to thank the boys June, Andrew, Ken, G, Albert, Lewis, Selwyn, and Matt if you guys are watching for making the shoot fun and interesting for me. Um, yeah. okay. And I hope it's okay for you guys to wake up at 4 in the morning and driving up and down the same stretch of roads multiple times just because I want another take. Wait, this shot is so with that being said, it's been a pleasure. If I miss anything, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment and check out the links in the description. And hopefully, I'll see you guys soon. Bye!